Hey, and welcome to another episode of UENPD TV. Today we are at the Scholar Academy, a K-8 charter school in Tooele, Utah, that's based on the principles of collaborative learning and experiential learning and prides itself on academic excellence. And today, we're gonna see a fourth grade teacher, Mr. Pratt, use Google Tour Creator to help teach the water cycle. Let's go in and check it out. This has been excellent to see you teaching in here today, Mr. Pratt. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, thank you guys for coming. It's uh, really neat to see it in action. Um, when you and I first met, it was in a mixed reality class, a UEN PD yep. course. I, I was working on getting my uh, technology endorsement for my education degree. And you got that? I, I did. Yours was actually the last class I needed for that. So Congratulations. Here, here we are, a tech endorsed teacher. Awesome. And it's good to see the technology in use and being used well. Um, yep. What, what was it that gave you the idea to try something in Google Tour Creator for this lesson? Um, with, with all of the, the software that I had been introduced to, I was really looking for, for something different, something that I could have the kids do with the, the virtual reality that they hadn't done before. Um, and I started thinking about the fourth grade curriculum and the different things that I could do. And based on, on that, I kind of, I had been teaching the water cycle in my class and I wanted something that I could bring back and use right away. And so that was kind of the, the starting point, the jump off point for why I chose to do the water cycle. Okay, so right here in Tooele, we're close to Salt Lake where we can see the water cycle mm -hmm. in action. But in your tour, you had some other different locations. Where did you find those locations? Um, the Go Google's map is connected with the VR tours and it allows you to use any of the 360 photos that are uploaded there in their software. So you just went into Google Maps and what kind of searches did you put in to find these? Um, that was probably one of the most difficult things because there's 360 photos available, but when I'm looking for a 360 photo of a pyramid, mm -hmm. I can easily go in and search for, you know, Egypt and find the pyramids there. But I'm looking for a 360 photo of evaporation and I'm looking for a 360 photo of precipitation. And, and it's really to try and find those non-location 360 photos was one of the hardest things to do. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of time and a lot of searching through different photographs to figure out what, what photos would work best for what we were trying to work with. Fantastic. Well, your creativity really did come through, and it's, it's neat to see the kids engaged. Um, now that you've done this lesson once, when you look back on it, what would you do differently? What would you do um, to make it a little bit easier on you or better? Do you think of any changes that come to mind? I feel like um, some of the things I've learned were just through, throughout time, having them work in the groups, mm -hmm. um, having them work one person at a time in the headset, everyone else on the computer. Um, the more engaged you can keep everybody at all times, the, the smoother the lesson goes and the more control you have in the classroom. The, the Scholar Academy um, prides itself on providing students with experiential learning and mm -hmm. cooperative and collaborative learning. Yep. So is this lesson, lesson typical of something you would do here at your school? Um, we always strive to, the more you can have the students working and collaborating get together, whether it be, you know, just like a, a, a two second turn and chat with your neighbor or, or you know, group projects or, I mean, re real life, there's not a whole lot of working alone. You're working with a business, you're working with a company, and, and really school is all about preparing kids for the real world. Mm -hmm. um, there are you know, few and far between jobs you can land where, where you will be just kind of solo on your own, but for the most part, these kids are gonna be working with groups the rest of their lives and, and being comfortable with that and understanding that they can work with somebody who's not necessarily their friend and you, know, and you can make those professional relationships work you know, getting them, you know, familiar with that and 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 comfortable with it is is really one of the the main goals of that collaborative learning and and projects like this where they're, you know, using the technology of the now. We've seen a lot of student learning. Um, I'm curious, what do you think your students would have to say about this experience? Well, rather than asking me what I think about them, how about we talk to a few of them? Let's do it. I like the VR because you can see the water cycle when you're not actually in the classroom. My favorite thing about using VRs is probably that you feel like you're not in the same place. My favorite way to learn in science is probably technology. It's easier to use technology because I grew up with it and I have a bunch at my house. That one of the things that I learned was that the sun 
the water goes up to the sun and it makes energy. Technology isn't just fun in the classroom, it's because we have um, a teacher like Mr. Pratt. So Mr. Pratt, we just saw a really cool lesson with VR and science. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we think like, oh, technology, it goes best with science and math. But can you think of any other subject areas where you could use a Google tour? Um, I think one of the places that this closely lends itself to being used is social studies. Hmm. Um, in fourth grade specifically, um, I, I took some time over my spring break to go up to the, the state capitol building. And with a 360 photo, rather than trying to find them on Google, you know, Google Maps or whatever, I, I, I took the photos myself. And I've actually gone and created another tour of the state capitol building. So they've got 360 photos and the whole VR tour of the outside of the building, the rotunda on the inside. Um, I've got a 360 shot of the House of Representatives room. We go downstairs to the exhibition hall. So I think any place in social studies really would lend itself to this because you're taking them to places that you might not otherwise be able to take them, especially once you get into the later grades. Like, I, I can't take my kids to these ancient civilizations, but if I can get a 360 photo of the ruins, I've then taken them to that ancient civilization. Fantastic. Cool. Well, Mr. Pratt, it's been really fun to watch you teach. Um, keep up the great work. You're an innovative educator, and your students and your school is lucky to have you here. Thanks for your time. Whoa. It was my pleasure. Thank you guys for coming out. Thanks for coming with us to the Scholar Academy to see that awesome lesson from Mr. Pratt. Thanks for watching UEN PD TV. If you're interested in Google Tour Creator or any of the other uh, professional development we do, check out our website, uen.org register. And then we'll see you in class.